This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend update from January 14th to January 16th of 2022. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Felipe, and welcome to Tactical Managers TV, where every Monday we update you on how the Americans did abroad over the weekend, and occasionally on Fridays, or most Fridays, we update you on how the Americans did abroad over the midweek. Now, one heads up before we start the episode here, there's one thing that I must say. Maybe next Monday, we might not have the Americans Abroad episode because I will be in Kansas City for a convention we were invited for, me and Pete from 11 Yanks. If that's the case, I might not be able to do the episode on Monday, but we will be doing the preview, the live streams, everything for the U.S. Men's National Team Camp, which, by the way, this week, the roster will be out. So keep an eye on that and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the live stream. Hit the like button before we start the episode or don't. I can't really force you to do anything. Let's start with the updates. So before we start with the updates of the performances, let's go through one new transfer that I want to talk about. Cole Bassett is heading to Feyenoord at Netherlands on an 18-month loan with an option to buy. It's an interesting move. I don't know much about the club themselves. I haven't watched them play, but they currently sit in third place at the Eredivisie, which is the Dutch league. So I'm looking forward to keeping track of Cole Bassett, another young American abroad. And yes, there is one more transfer to talk about, which is Justin Cheda Hoffenheim. I'll talk it when we reach the Chris Richards section. So now let's go to the performance updates. First player to talk about is Christian Pulisic from Chelsea. On Saturday, Pulisic started and played 69 minutes nice for Chelsea during their 1-0 loss to Manchester City. And for this same match, Zach Steffen stayed on the bench the full 94 City. For this one, Christian Pulisic played as a right attacking midfielder on a 3-4-2-1 formation behind Lukaku and next to Ziyech. Personally, I would have preferred Ziyech and Christian Pulisic to switch, so Pulisic on the left and Ziyech on the right, but... That's not what Thomas Tuchel did. Pulisic did not have a good game. Neither did any of the front three, including Lukaku and Ziyech for Chelsea. And neither did the other two that came in later on, like Timo Werner. Manchester City also scored a goal right after Christian Pulisic left the game. Now, they scored a goal one minute after Pulisic left. And I'm not saying that the reason they scored was because Pulisic was pulled off of the game. But I'm also not saying that ain't the reason. For this match, Pulisic had 26 touches only, one key pass, 84% passing accuracy, won one out of his one ground duel, and was not very active in the game. Also, before we move on to the next player, there's one thing I must say. I am 100% convinced that Phil Foden is the real Slim Shady. Next player on the list is Weston McKinney from Juventus. On Saturday, Weston McKinney continued his impressive form, playing another full 90 minutes for Juve during their 2-0 win over Udinese. And Weston McKinney did score Juventus' second goal off a header, of course. Which means, for now on, I will be calling him Air Weston. He was absolutely fantastic in the game, and this comes after he played 120 minutes over the midweek. Weston McKinney played the first half and part of the second half as a left midfielder in a 4-4-2 formation. However, a lot of the times when Paulo Dybala would drop back to playmake, Weston would move up high at the field almost as if he was a roaming striker, attacking the ball in the box, which is essentially even how he scored to go off a header. And this happened a lot throughout the match that I noticed. Weston McKinney high up the field almost looking like a striker. Later in the second half, he played a little bit as a right midfielder and then he closed the game off as a central midfielder in the 4-4-2 formation. Now Wes McKenney was not only just highly involved on the offense, his defense was pretty good in this game. Just look at those defensive stats. He had one block shot, three interceptions and three tackles. That's pretty high for a midfielder. Now Allegri loves to play Weston McKinney on that Mezala role and give him a lot of freedom and it seems like Weston thrives at this chaotic role essentially right he has a lot of freedom to operate on offense and where to position himself especially to go into the box for headers this is the best that we've seen from Weston McKinney in his short career however some of the rude Canadians still think Eustachio is the best midfielder in CONCACAF but I mean I do have to give Stefan Eustachio some credit right here as he is leading Passos Ferreira to a mid-table at Liga NOS the Portuguese league so congratulations to Eustachio as he's able to lead a team to the mid-table of a Portuguese league, and that seems like is enough for the rude Canadians to compare him to Weston McKinney. Quick update on Giovanni Reina. He was not available for Dortmund on Friday, not even on the bench. So the roster is not out yet for the U.S. Men's National Team at the time of this recording. I just don't think Reina will be in this U.S. Men's National Team roster, but I hope I am wrong. Now, quick update on Sergino Des. Barcelona will be playing on Thursday. However, they played last week against Real Madrid, and he didn't even make the bench. It looks like Des is on a move. It could be 
to Chelsea on the loan. It could be a full transfer to Bayern. It could be anywhere else. We don't know. It just seems that Xavi doesn't want to play him. So if that's the case, might as well go. Now, Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. On Saturday, Tyler Adams started and went the full 90 minutes for RB Leipzig during their 2-0 win over Stuttgart. Tyler started the game as a dual six in a 3-4-1-2 formation, which is essentially, you can call it a 3-5-2 formation. Campbell was the one involved mostly on the buildup, while Tyler was higher up the field. Being higher up the field also led to Tyler Adams being one of the main guys on the press when the opponent had possession, mostly on the buildup, to be honest. Now, eventually in the second half, Tyler Adams did play as a, an eight in a dual eight, essentially, while Campbell became the six. So Tyler Adams is playing a much different role at Leipzig than he does for the U.S. men's national team, despite being a midfielder rather than a right wing back, which was how Nagelsmann used to play him. And I'm, I'm fine with this. Him playing as an eight, a six, doesn't matter to me as long as he gets minutes in the midfield. Now for this match, Tyler Adams also had 55 touches, 84.6 passing accuracy, one five out of 10 ground duels and one one out of his one uh, aerial duel. All right, now we're going to talk about the players by position. We'll start the goalkeepers, but... There's not much to talk about. They already mentioned that Zach Steffen stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes, as always, for Manchester City because they had a Premier League game. And Ethan Horvath continues to not get any minutes for Nottingham Forest. That transfer to Nottingham Forest still makes no sense. Now, so let's go to the center backs. And before I start the center backs, hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm. Comment something down below as well. And share this video with anyone, even your dog or cat. So let's start with John Brooks from Wolfsburg. On Saturday, Brooks started and went the full 90 minutes for Wolfsburg during their 0-0 draw with Hertha Berlin. And this was a very important match on the relegation battle in Bundesliga. The draw, however, did work more in favor of Hertha as they do remain one point ahead of Wolfsburg, while Wolfsburg sits just three points clear of the relegation zone. For this one, John Brooks played as a left center back in a back three, helping his team hold a clean sheet. And he once again, for the second straight game, had a very solid performance. So stat-wise, John Brooks won seven out of his seven ground duels, won four out of his five aerial duels, had 70 touches, 72.5 passing accuracy, 72.5 percentage passing accuracy. I apologize for that. And he had one big chance created despite being a center back. So another solid performance by John Brooks, which I sure do hope that he does make it to the camp, right? The January camp, the USMNT roster. But if I had to bet money on it, I don't think Greg will bring John Brooks. Now off to a player that well, most certainly being the U.S. men's national team January camp and a transfer that happened to Hoffenheim. So let's talk about Chris Richards and now Justin Che also from Hoffenheim. On Saturday, Richards started as a left center back in the back three and went the full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim during their 2-1 loss to Union Berlin. A direct battle for a Champions League spot, which Hoffenheim has now dropped to fourth place since they were in third before this match. And they are now tied with Union Berlin in points and Union Berlin sits in fifth. For the first goal, Hoffenheim allowed Richards was not involved in that one. Now, for the second one, it wasn't his fault. But yes, he was involved and he does share some blame with many of his teammates. Now, now the, the O3 fans, fans try to put the blame on Richards just because Johan Vasquez hasn't been succeeding in the Serie A. And that was a nice try. But sorry, it wasn't on Richards. Maybe you guys should worry a little bit about Diego Lainez's is goal scoring track record in La Liga. Now, the big news here is that Justin Che will join Chris Richards in Hoffenheim for an 18-month loan with an option to buy. A big move for another FC Dallas Academy player. He is actually expected to get minutes this season, so I'm very excited for that. And I'm looking forward to keeping track of Justin Che and Chris Richards now in the same team of Bundesliga. Also, we did also have an interview with Justin Che here in the channel when he was still on loan with Bayern. So go check that out on the playlist that we have with interview with players if you want to see what Justin had to say a couple months ago. Now, Eric Palmer Brown from Troy in League A. On Sunday, Eric Palmer Brown started and went the full 90 minutes for Troy during their 1 0 loss to Lyon. I was not able to watch this match, but apparently, Palmer Brown did very well. Here are some of his stats. He had eight clearances, which is pretty big, two block shots, four interceptions, five tackles, and one last man tackle. So those are some pretty impressive stats. However, 
Leon scored off a PK that Palmer Brown was the one that committed it. Regardless, I've heard he had a great game. I'm going to try to keep track. I wasn't expecting him to start as he didn't have many minutes throughout the season. Now, Matt Miazga didn't play this weekend. However, the Deportivo Alaves faces Real Betis midweek, so we could see a Miazga versus Lainez match if Diego Lainez gets off the bench for Real Betis. Next on the list is Mark McKenzie from Genk. And over the weekend, he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes and was back to his old self with Genk. So late 2021, he was getting a lot of minutes. Didn't get any minutes this weekend. Disappointed me. Stayed on the bench the full 90. Now, Cameron Carter-Vickers, no game over the weekend, but he does face Chris Miller's team, Hibernian, this Monday. So if you watch that game or know what happened, comment it down below so people can get updated. So it could be the debut of Chris Miller, former Orlando City, versus Cameron Carter-Vickers. Probably the best center back in the Scottish Premiership right now. Now we're going to move on to the fullbacks and we'll start with Anthony Robinson and Tim Ream from Fulham. On Saturday, Ream and Robinson started and went the full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 6-2 win over Bristol City. Now, th the surprise of this win was out of the six goals, Robinson had no assist while Tim Ream did get an assist. Fulham has scored now 13 goals in their last two championship matches. Next player is Reggie Cannon from Boa Vista, which honestly I should start putting him as a center back at this point. On Saturday, Reggie Cannon started and went the full 90 minutes for Boa Vista during their 1-1 draw with Gio Vicente. Now, Kenan got a yellow card for this one and played as a right center back once again in the back three. Next one here is Sam Vines from Antwerp. On Saturday, Vines started and went the full 90 minutes for Antwerp during their 3-0 win over Charleroi in Belgium. Next fullback on the list is Joe Scali from Borussia Mönchengladbach, and he's back. On Saturday, Scali started off on the bench and came in at the 61st minute for Gladbach during their 2-1 loss to Leverkusen. He played as a left wing back for this one, and it makes sense that he was coming off the bench as he was returning from COVID. I do expect expect him to be back to the starting level very soon probably next match the last fullback that i want to talk about here in this video is deandre yedlin for galatasaray and he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for galatasaray last week i didn't think he was benched i thought he was being rested but now it's two games in a row that he gets zero minutes so it is fair to say that Yedlin might have been benched. Let's wait for a couple more games, but it looks like DeAndre Yedlin is no longer a starter for Galatasaray in Turkey. All right, before I start the midfielders, quick update on Jonathan Gomez. He might debut for Real Sociedad's B team at La Liga 2 this upcoming week. We'll keep you guys updated very soon, but he hasn't played yet. He's been trained with them, and he's expected to do so. Now we're going to go to the midfielders, and let's start with Yunus Musa from Valencia. On Sunday, Musa started and went the full 90 minutes for Valencia as a right wing back slash a right midfielder during their 1-0 win against Atletico Baleares in the Copa del Rey. The good thing about this is he does get a full 90 minutes every time they play a Copa del Rey match. They advance. That means more playing time as his La Liga minutes have been all over the place. Fairly inconsistent. All right, the next midfielder are the Venezia boys, Tenor Tessman and Gianluca Busso. And they have a new teammate, which I'll talk about. On Sunday, Tessman started and played 34 minutes for Venezia, which is a little odd, I'll explain, while General Cabusio came off the bench at the 80th minute for Venezia during their 1-1 draw with Empoli. Now, Tessman was subbed off early, and it was not due to an injury. It was at the 34th minute, so this is not a good look. It was actually two tactical subs at that moment, which apparently the coach wasn't happy with how they were playing. This is definitely not good for Tenor Tessman. Now, General Cabusio came in at the last 10 minutes, so there's not much to talk about there. But hey, they got a new teammate. And it's Nani, the former Orlando City designated player. So I'm pretty happy that MLS is working as a stepping stone to get veterans back into Serie A. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, now Nani, you know, and Prime Insini, aka my brother, comes to MLS. By the way, Nani also got an assist for this match. And hey, 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 don't worry, that was a joke. I'm not an MLS fanboy. If anything, I've been called an MLS hater very often, even though I'm not that as well or, or maybe i am who cares at this point now venezia is only two points clear from the relegation zone so they need to get all the points they can get and it's looking like they're gonna fight against relegation all the way to the end of the season quick update on james sands rangers didn't play but it looks like james sands could make his debut in scotland over this week okay midweek we'll see we'll keep everyone posted as of now he hasn't played yet now brendan aronson from rb salzburg they're holding friendlies this month they'll be back february 6th so only after the u.s men's national team camp so only friendly matches for brendan aronson as of now now julian green and tim tillman from firth in bundesliga on sunday tim tillman played pretty much the full 90 minutes as he was subbed off at added time while julian green stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for firth during their 2-2 draw with Armenia. Next on the list is Luca De La Torre from Heracles, a player that I hope to see in the U.S. men's national team roster that's coming out this week. On Saturday, Luca De La Torre started and went the full 90 minutes for Heracles during their 0-0 draw with NEC. Now, Luca for this one won man off the match and 
One thing is for sure, the reason he gets no assist, which is still zero this season, by the way, is mostly due to his teammates around him not being able to finish. For this match, Luca De La Torre had 71 touches, two key passes, one big chance created that didn't end on a goal, and yet it was still not enough. Yeah, so I saw on Twitter some people claiming Luca De La Torre shouldn't be in the national team because he has no goals or assists for Heracles, but you got to take into context that assist also requires someone scoring the goal. So no matter how many chances you create, if your team can't score, they're not going to score. You got to look into the game and how the player plays, and Luca De La Torre is a quality player. Plus, he's been playing as a dual six for most of the time, so you don't expect him to get stats. Tyler Adams doesn't get stats, but who cares? Next on the list is Alex Mendes from Vizela at Liga NOS in Portugal. On Sunday, Mendes started and went the full 90 minutes for Vizela during their 2-0 loss to Sporting, the current Portuguese champion. Now, Dwayne Holmes from Huddersfield was not with Huddersfield over the weekend because he became a dad. So congratulations to Dwayne Holmes right there. Now, the next player on the list is Richie Ledesma from PSV. He stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes for PSV, got no minutes, but he's still being available for the senior team, so it's good. And remember, he's coming back from an ACL injury, so we got to be patient. Plus, PSV does lead Eredivisie currently, the Dutch league. All right, we're reaching the end of the video here. We've got to the forwards. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button. If you made it this far and you can deal with me, you can help me by hitting that like button. So the first forward I want to talk about is Timothy Weah from Lille, and he's still not available, still injured, recovering from the muscle injury. They haven't really come out with a timeable. But I think it's safe to assume that Tim Weah will also likely not be in the U.S. men's national team roster that's coming out this week. Next on the list is something that worries me is Conrad de la Fuente. He was out with, for Olympique Marseille, apparently with also a muscle injury. They didn't say how severe it is, how long he'll be out for. But since he's injured, it looks like... It looks like he might not be in the U.S. men's national team roster as well, even though I don't know if Greg would bring him, even if he's healthy. So yeah, we're going to get some... Paul Riola ball for this camp for sure. All right, now Ricardo Pepe from Augsburg in Bundesliga. On Sunday, Pepe got his first Bundesliga start and played 84 minutes for Augsburg during their 1-1 draw with Eintracht Frankfurt. And for this match, he played as one of the two strikers in a 4-4-2 formation. He did have a goal disallowed in this match, rightfully so, as his teammate did foul the opponent. But Pepe also did miss a big opportunity where he was also offside, so it wouldn't have counted anyway, but there's still no excuses. That was a poor finish from him. But overall, he looked a little bit anxious at times to score, and I did think he looked like he belonged in the league. As the game went on, he looked more and more comfortable throughout the match. Now, his performance was nothing special, nor horrible, but when you take into account that he's just 19 and it was his very first Bundesliga start, it wasn't bad. I liked what I saw. I was happy with what I saw. But we do want to see the trajectory for Pepe to go up every single match. Now, as I said it before, Augsburg does not create many high quality opportunities, but they do create enough, mostly off crosses. Pepe will have to pick up good form and be highly efficient if he wants to get a few goals this season and save them from relegation which right now, they are out of the relegation zone and Stuttgart was sent in for now. In terms of stats, for this one, Ricardo Pepe had 36 touches, 68% passing accuracy, won four out of seven ground duels, and won three out of nine uh, aerial duels. Along with that, he had one key pass. Next on the list is Matthew Hoppe from Mallorca. On Saturday, Hoppe started off on the bench and came in at the 83rd minute for Mallorca during their 2-1 win over Espanyol in Copa del Rey. Hoppy for this one played as a center forward and it is the second game in a row that he gets minutes. Not many minutes, but I'm still happy he got the field and hopefully it continues to go up. Also, despite the lack of minutes, he looked very confident in the field. Rusty as well, but very confident. Clearly confidence is not an issue with this player. Next on the list is a player that debuted for his new team this weekend, which is Daryl DK that got his debut to West Brom. On Saturday, DK started off on the bench and came in at the 59th minute for West Brom during their 1-0 loss to QPR in the English Championship. DK makes his debut for West Brom and return to the English Championship after a successful loan last season at Barnsley. For this match, DK had just 18 touches, a low 37.5 passing accuracy percentage-wise, one key pass, won two out of four ground duels, and won three out of eight aerial duels. Lots of work to get done here, but I do think Daryl DK will be successful during his time at West Brom. It's just a matter of when, not if. Now, Nicolas Joachini from Montpellier. On Sunday, Joachini started off on the bench and came in at the 78th minute for Montpellier during their 3-1 loss to Strasbourg at Ligue 1. All right, the last player that we want to cover here is Josh Sargent from Norwich. On Saturday, Sargent started and almost went the full 90 minutes as he was subbed off at the 87th minute for Norwich during their 2-1 victory over Everton. 
in what was likely Josh Sargent's best game for Norwich. Probably a boost of confidence from becoming a dad last week. So yeah, Josh Sargent became a dad last week. So just like Dwayne Holmes, congratulations to Josh Sargent. For this match, Josh Sargent played as a right midfielder slash right winger for Norwich. Looked at times like a 4-4-2 formation. Actually, mostly looked like a 4-4-2 formation. But also, I did notice it looked at times as a 4-2-3-1 as well. For their first goal, Josh Sargent crossed the ball and it hit the player for an own goal. Maybe you can count this as an assist. You definitely cannot count as a goal as he did not kick the ball towards the goal. He just crossed it and then Michael Keane scored an own goal essentially. So good week for Sargent. Became a dad, had a very strong performance. Hopefully his confidence starts to rise, which it looked a lot more confident for this game and he starts to produce. We still need that Sargent goal in the Premier League. I'm still waiting for that. It's coming, it's loading, we're getting there. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As we said last week, since the number of Americans abroad has gone up, some of them will not be covered because they're probably not in the conversation for the men's national team. And if they didn't play at all, a lot of them that are just playing friendlies, I might have not mentioned their name like PFOC, right? His team is just playing friendlies right now. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button before you go. Don't forget we will do a live stream this week also for the U.S. Men's National Team roster. And we have a video coming up with Manuel Feth from Transfermark explaining how market values work. And if you're in Kansas City, comment down below because we'll be there during the midweek. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have a great day.